Today we are going to try to cram in a bunch of stuff. First, we're going to give a shout out to a tent builder, Netman Corp. We're going to talk about cultural fit. And then I want to talk about the Laffer Curb because I learned something from an interview with Laffer on Valuetainment is the podcast. His name is Pat that does it. I thought it was really interesting and some great great applications to biblical principles that I just thought were fantastic. So we're going to talk about that stuff today. This is How to Build a Tent, the podcast on how to make you successful. My name is Matt Williams. As always, thank you so much for listening to the show. I say it every show, but I really mean it. I don't take it for granted. I really appreciate all of the listens that we have, the thousands and thousands of people listening to this show. It's a true blessing for me. Thank you for sharing the show and being a subscriber. If you go to fightlaughfeast.com, put an HDBT in the memo field, you'll get a 15 ounce mug. You'll get a pint glass from the Fight Laugh Feast Network while supplies last, which they just got a new batch. So get them while you can. And you'll become alongside of us to proclaim the Lordship of Jesus in every area of life. If you want to reach out to me, you can find me on the social media sites, How to Build a Tent. You can email me, Matt, at howtobuildatent.com. I love hearing from you guys. Please, if you feel like, eh, I talk to him too much. That's not it. I love talking to you guys. I love hearing from you guys. I never think, man, I wish this person would stop emailing me or man, I wish this person would stop tweeting me or direct messaging me. I really love helping you guys. So please reach out and uh, let me know what you guys are doing, what tents you're building and how I can help you and how I can support you. If it's a direct message, if it's some feedback, if it's giving you a shout out on the show, I'd love to do that. Speaking of the shout outs, I want to give out a shout out to a company called The Netman Corp. And their website is thenetmancorp.com. And they do a bunch of design work. I just had them do a logo for me. It was really cheap. I spent $150 and we went through several iterations of a logo for a company I'm starting called The Taco Guy. We're doing a taco catering personal chef business for parties in Florida. It's one of the companies I'm starting right now. And they just did a really great job. They were really responsive. They really did just a fantastic job of understanding what I wanted. They have a great process. They boiled it down and they're allowed to, and it allows them to charge such a cheap fee because of how efficient they are. And it's really great. I mean, I'm usually spending 400 to a thousand dollars for a logo traditionally. So it was nice to find these guys and be able to get a good quality logo for $150. And you might be saying, what is, you know, what's a big deal of a logo? You can just have any crappy logo. Let me tell you, it is so important to have a great logo. It is the first impression oftentimes that people have of you. And that lasting, that first impression is lasting, that it's going to carry with these people that see your logo. If it's their first impression throughout the whole whole time that they are interacting with your business, if at all, if they <laughs> even decide to interact with your business at all, which is really big if you are online e-commerce and that applies to the website. So if you want to give them a shout out or check them out, give them some business, if you're looking for a logo, if you just need a redesign, go to the netmincorp.com. I actually have a clip to jump into today from Laffer. I wanted you to hear him in his own words. It's going to be interesting to see what it's like to use a clip in a short format that we're doing, but I think it's really important to hear what he has to say. I think it's fantastic. But before we do that, I want to just talk a little bit about cultural fit. And we hear about how important it is to find people, employees, and for you looking for a job to find a company that match that you can fit in and feel comfortable with and you can believe in and invest in that has a compatible culture, that has a compatible vision. And I think kind of culture is the overarching like environment that you are working in or finding people to work for you in. And that's made up of your vision, the goals that you have as a company, your strategies, all of these different things, the personalities that you have, the managers you have, and definitely the C-suite uh, level of managers, whatever you want to call them. Um, I always feel weird to kind of call them a manager because they're so much, they're more than a manager. They're doing so much more. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. And I was thinking about how important it is to find someone that doesn't just in agree with the culture or the vision of your company, but someone that, that like will fit with it, that 
is made for it almost. And then the older I get, the more I realize that my best work, the the more sacrifices I'm willing to make for a company or a client or whatever it is, those top performing levels that I hit is when I fit perfectly with the culture. Not just that I think it's a good idea, not that I just think that it's really neat what a company's doing or wow, that is an awesome service or product, but it's the companies that I align with. And that is something that you should be looking for when you're looking for a job and and when you're also looking to hire people. Not just people that think what you do is pretty cool, but people that are willing to sacrifice, that are willing to put 100% into what you guys are trying to do to obtain that vision, to hit those goals, to be absorbed in the culture. Because even if someone likes what you're doing, but they just don't have the temperament or the personality to fit, they're not going to do their best. They're not going to make the sacrifices. And the, sometimes you have to let them come in and try to find out. And I think managing expectations with that too is something that's very wise for hiring companies, for you who are doing hiring, is to just be honest and like, hey, we're going to give this a test run. Have it in, in, have it in your HR policies that we're gonna try it out and see how it works. We'll reassess in six months. We'll reassess in a year to see if this really is a good fit for you. And then have a strategy for how you're gonna help them if they don't fit to find another job where it's not a scary thing where they don't have to try to fake it. I mean, if you could create something like that, and I don't even really know what it looks like, but where you could have an honest conversation in six months to a year after hiring somebody that you think is gonna be a good fit to see if they really are, And then be able to part ways and have it be where it's not like a threat to the employee that they're going to lose their livelihood in a moment. I mean, that would be a huge competitive advantage because you'd be able to process and filter through people to find the right fit. Because let me tell you, the performance level of somebody who is bought in versus somebody who is checked out is night and day difference. It's a huge competitive advantage and you will be able to far differentiate yourself from all of the competition if you could get them by far more people that are bought in, committed, identify with your culture, identify with your vision. You're just going to be outperforming everybody if you can do that. And it starts with the hiring process. All right, now let's start. Let's jump right into this Laffer interview. The optimal tax rate, something in the range of 10 to 12 percent on a flat rate based tax where you tax everything at the same rate, no deductions, no exemptions, no exclusions. Is that sustainable? Oh, yeah, that is sustainable. If you look at all the biblical references to tithing, it's 10 percent. You know, that's that that's what sort of historically has been, quote, the optimal tax over the thousands of years. 10 or 12 percent. You know, a very low number. And what it does allow for is the long term effects. Now, just remember, if I raise your taxes tomorrow to 90 percent, I'll probably collect a lot more money. But two years from now, I won't because you'll change your behavior. All right, so before I comment on his clip that I just thought was a huge validation, not that we needed it for our Christian beliefs, but something I learned about the Laffer Curve is I always understood the Laffer Curve to be a point on the curve of where we are with tax rates. And depending on where you are in that curve, it is possible that if you lower taxes, you will increase the production of an economy which would raise the revenues. So there are points on the curve where lowering taxes will increase the revenues. And we've seen that with tax cuts lately with the um, the Trump tax cuts, which Laffer compliments in this interview. But one of the things that he explained about it that I didn't know or I forgot about is there are two points. They kind of, it's like a reflective curve on the sides where you will make the same amount of revenue on both points. But one of them is at like, for example, an 80% tax rate versus a 20% tax rate. And he was explaining that you will make the same amount of money at 80% tax rate versus 20% tax rate because of the efficiency and the motivation that will come from a lower tax rate. And on the flip side, the discouragement and the lack of motivation to work 
at such a high tax rate. And his point is, is why would you ever want to tax at the 80% level when you get the same amount for the 20% level? And he goes on to talk about how he's worked with Democrats and so on um, about like about tax policy and things like that before the, the Democrats became left loons, but that they were still wanting to do, you know, win elections and do what's right for the economy to win votes. No, you know, then let's not kid ourselves. That's what they were trying to do. But the thing that he said is when he was pressed and like, so what is the appropriate tax rate? And he cites the Bible. He cites a few things, but he cites the Bible that 10% is the number and the 10% flat rate, no loopholes, that's just what you pay, is what all the research leads to that is the optimum tax rate. Now, just imagine if we believed the Bible and we implemented biblical policies in our culture, in our politics, and in our economics. How much money would we have saved on this research? How much money would we be saving in lost production from these high taxes we have today if we just had a biblical perspective? And that is why this show is so important because we are taking biblical principles and applying them to all areas of our life to make us successful. Now take that, go read your Bibles. Let's be successful together. We'll talk to you tomorrow. God bless.